Joining me now, astrophysicist and host of Star Talk, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, and by the way, you can watch Star Talk Mondays, 11 p.m. Eastern, on National Geographic, Nat Geo. So you can go there after the show. Everyone's all warmed up and uh, ready to rumble. There you go. So you really try and have conversations with people that you wouldn't assume are science people uh, to show people that the love of science is almost universal. Uh, precisely. And that's the only reason why I'm here in this moment to try to say what you just said in those few seconds. So yeah. we're, we're done in the interview. <laughs> we're done. Thanks for coming. Great show. I don't have a sensory deprivation chamber. No, there are people who are icons in their own fields yeah. doing whatever it is they do, and nearly all of them are not scientists. They have a following. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we bring them on, and I just have conversations with them about all the ways that science has touched their lives, mm -hmm. whether or not they knew it. And this is an exploration, a mutual exploration in conversation. Then we cut the show together in studio, mm -hmm. and I have a, well, I have a my co-host is always a professional stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. And then I have guests who are drawn from academia who will then explore the topics that were raised by the celebrity that I interviewed. Who is, uh, who is more uh, fearful, the, uh, the academics of the comics or vice versa? Uh, <laughs> well, the way I think about it is, the academics bring in a, a, a level of gravity mm -hmm. to, the, to the show, and the comics bring in a, a level of levity. And I control those two knobs mm -hmm. so that we hit the right level, so that the viewer gets a, uh, is, is informed, entertained, a smile. It's late at night, after all. You don't want, to, you want things to be too heavy, mm -hmm. but you don't want to have wasted your, your hour of your life. It's, it's Learn really, something for a change. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And, and I'm learning something about you because I'm assuming that you are an empiricist. And as, you know, perhaps as a scientist. Well, but so is anyone who cares about objective truths. That's, that's so not a, like uniquely me. No, but <laughs> that the idea that an empiricist would want to somehow detach from the senses is very funny. And that's why you had the reaction. Oh, right. The sensory deprivation. Right. Chamber. I, I like my senses. Yes. But that's, that's such an integral part of who you are. I mean, that is implicit to your being. Yeah, I mean, again, I said I had nothing against it. I might do it as an experiment, yeah. but not as a, like a natural state of life. Mm -hmm. Give me my senses back. Now, all, speaking of, of the state costs. of life, we're really trying to figure out if, if there is life immediate, uh, immediately around us, especially on Planets. Mars. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, so, and now we're learning that some of these massive rockets built by private space companies can get us to not only the moon, but to the red planet faster and cheaper than the government. How important is a public-private partnership in deep space exploration? First of all, there's always been a public-private partnership ever since the early days of the space program. Tang, the, the tempurpedic <laughs> mattresses. <laughs> so the LEM, for example, that's the, the lunar excursion module, that was designed and built in Grumman, Long Island, in Bethpage, Long Island. Oh, look at that. To this day, there are people who walk the streets standing a little taller and a little prouder because mm. they had an uncle, an aunt, or someone who participated in that bold adventure to go and land on the moon. So if we, if we are going to have further space exploration that yeah. is going to be funded by the government, we can't afford anything. So on the list of things that we have, what has to go in order to fund NASA? No, no, no. You said we can't afford anything when we're spending four-tenths of one cent of your tax dollar. So it is false, mm -hmm. to, objectively false, to say we can't afford it. All you've done is say, I choose to spend 99.6% of your tax dollar on all these other things in the country yeah. and 0.4% on the exploration of the universe. Mm -hmm. I don't, have, the, the, I don't have a problem with the exploration of the universe. I have a problem with all the other stuff. Well, the 99% of the stuff that we're spending that, money on. This is my I don't think that's breaking the bank, point. but I think it's We're the not breaking bank. the bank. This is my point. And by the way, if private enterprise, because this is mm -hmm. Fox Business, mm -hmm. if private enterprise is going to go to Mars or someplace interesting with people, mm -hmm. they're not likely to do that first mm -hmm. in the sense that if they do it, it's because the government says, hey, who's got a spaceship that'll get us there? Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. And, then, right. and then, then they pay to make that happen. That's yeah. exactly it. Yeah. That's, and then will that's we, a business will model. Will we do it before Russia and China? Uh, we tend to be reactive rather than proactive. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, we th remember ourselves as space pioneers. Mm -hmm. We did practically everything in the space program only because Russia either did it yeah. or said they were going to do it. Because of Valentina Tereshkova. 
That's another right. another uh, that she she was up there first, and we tried to do that next. Yeah. So we were less pioneers than our memory tells us. Oh, Did my memory tells me that we have to go because we're up against the heartbreak. And you're yelling at me in my oh, ear, and it's so okay, sad. Okay. Uh, we need more time. More time than four and a half minutes to talk about the universe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank God for Star Talk. It's on tonight, Nat Geo. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thanks. Neil deGrasse Tyson.